Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of A War Named Desire, a Hong Kong crime drama action flick from 2000 that stars Francis Ng, Daniel Chan, David Wang, and Gigi Lung. So we begin the film with a young Chinese man named Jones, played by Daniel Chan, who tells his girlfriend that he must travel to Thailand to settle some matters from his past. Then, we are introduced to Francis Ng's character, a triad named Charles, who is interrogating one of his underlings for taking a drug shipment, uh, despite the organization's commitment to not enter the drug business. So they prefer the casino industry, uh, but co competition in Thailand is getting more ferocious in that area uh, due to the arrival of gangs from Korea. So as it turns out, Jones is Charles' younger brother, and when they were kids... Charles stole a substantial amount of money from their house and fled. So Jones is seeking him out all these years later to take back the money. Unfortunately, he gets roped into some triad conflicts along the way. Now, one of the things I liked most about A War Named Desire is the dramatic element. You know, the plot itself is nothing really groundbreaking, but the performances, the dialogue, and the conflicts are what really make it work. So, for example, after the main conflict of the film erupts, there is a sequence involving the big boss man of the crime syndicate. And remember, these are triads who are operating in Thailand. And he essentially talks with the characters who are involved with this main conflict that, uh, that erupts. But he comes to a resolution that is somewhat immoral, unfair, but entirely practical. You know what I mean? He doesn't care who's right or who's wrong in the situation. He just wants the money to keep flowing in from his businesses. So it's those kinds of scenes that gives the film a certain realism and dramatic weight that I appreciated. Another interesting thing is that although a few of our protagonists are badasses, the film chooses to express that fact outside of the action scenes. And the viewer will know that these people are not to be messed with before they ever tangle with anyone. You know, that aspect is similar in some ways to the Korean film Gangster High, uh, which had a protagonist who was very controlled over his emotions, but the viewer still knew that he could mess people up if he wanted to. And you get the same uh, thing in A War Named Desire. And it certainly helps that we get some really good performances by the lead cast, with Francis Ng and Gigi Lung being the standouts. You know, this is one of the movies that solidified my fandom for Francis. You know, infusing life into a role like this can be a bit difficult for an actor because the depth of the character is mostly expressed through uh, the performances, not really the script. You know, he had to present a character who is level-headed and capable in his position in the criminal underworld, while at the same time being vulnerable and sympathetic to certain characters. And Francis really just knocked it out of the park with this one. I mean, there were times in this movie where, you know, I did not really know how much he cared for a particular character until I saw his facial expressions during pivotal moments. You know, definitely one of my favorite roles of his career. And Gigi Lung was a total surprise when I first saw this. You know, I was unfamiliar with much of her work before I saw A War Named Desire, and she made an impression on me in this one for sure. You know, similar to Francis's character, you know, she had to win the audience over with her screen presence, and she did it. And while she has subsequently been in some other quality films like Aberdeen and some others, um, she impacted me the most in her role in A War Named Desire. So this one is my favorite role of hers, uh, for sure. Now in terms of the script, I liked it. You know, the main conflict follows a logical progression, you know, where character motivation is understandable. You know, it's not overly convoluted or anything like that, where you have people coming in from out of nowhere to introduce obstacles out of the blue. Uh, only to then drop them like a bad habit uh, moments later. You know, believer. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, when someone shows up in a war named desire, it's for a reason. In regard to the action, the impact relies heavily on the drama. There are only a few shootouts in the movie overall, but if someone on YouTube posted a compilation, you know, most people would come away thinking that it looks pretty good. You know, nothing special, because it would be out of context with the underlying drama. The action design, in general, is pretty basic stuff here, but within the film itself, it definitely has an impact. You know, my favorite scene of the film is an apartment raid by the bad guys that is intercut with the main antagonist, 
walking through the crowds during the New Year festival in Thailand. That scene is really good. It's a really good scene. Uh, but do not go into a war named Desire expecting an action fest, because you're not going to get that here. But, I mean, outside of that possible criticism, you know, I think a number of people would like this movie if they decided to seek it out. A War Named Desire can still be found on Region 1 DVD in the United States, but copies are becoming a bit more rare. And as always, we'll see you next time.